Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Cinema 4D tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning how to make this uh, golden color shiny ring completely in Cinema 4D and um, uh, I would not like to take the credit for this but the credit goes to uh, Rory Martin from Break My Funeral and uh, he made this uh, super quick model breakdown which is a minute long and uh, I just, you know, um, Follow it along, slow down the video, and uh, you know, made a tutorial for some guys who really could not follow it up. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for you guys to follow it. So, um, uh, I think uh, you know, we can get pretty started with it. So, here in Cinema 40, I'm gonna go to the render settings and change the width and the height signals to a 1280 by 720 preset so that we have a high uh, definition, okay. So to start off, let's make a uh, tube, and uh, I'm gonna set the uh, orientation to plus x, and the inner the inner radius will be 185, and uh, the outer radius uh, will be 200. Uh, I'm gonna add a fillet. The segments will be six, and the radius, oops, the radius will be five. Five. And I'm going to go here to display and choose Grower Shading Line so that we can have a look at the segments present over here. Okay, so uh, once we have that, I'm going to select the tube and uh, click this button to make it editable, or you can press C on the keyboard. Then we will go to the top view. We're going to select the line selection, say the point selection mode. Uh, we're going to drop down over here. And uh, I'm going to press K on the keyboard to select the uh, you know, knife tool, I'm going to select loop and I'm going to make a loop over here and uh, over here okay now the thing you have to remember is as you can see here there are two lines you can place the cursor over here and make a cut or over here now the difference is if you place the cut over here let me just show you an example if I place it over here on the bottom line and then we go back to the perspective view we see that we have a line that is cut on the inside of the tube okay but that's not what we want so since I made the cut on the top line which is you know as you can see here it shows the outer part we have the cuts outside on the outside surface and not on the inside okay anyways uh, once we go back there, let's uh, go back here and I'm going to select the polygon selection. I'm going to press UL on the keyboard to get the loop selection or you can go to select and loop selection and I'm going to select this and I'm going to choose right click and choose extrude and I'm going to set the offset to 10 centimeters and press enter. Then I'm going to press UL again to select the loop selection. I'm going to select this side and this side as well and I'm going to go to select set selection because we will be needing the selection for the white material let me just name this uh, white mm, just just my white okay so uh, anytime we want we go select the cube and we just click away and we want to select this part again if you just double click on the polygon selection we get this whole thing selected right great next um, let's make a cube and I'm going to set the uh, x size to 270 the Y size to 40, sorry, not 40, 70, and the Z size to 70. And uh, let me just uh, bring this up. And uh, I'm going to go and choose a taper deformer and drop the taper deformer under the cube. Let's uh, bring that up as well. And in the coordinate tab for the taper object, I'm going to set the strength to 150. And uh, I'm going to go to the rotation and uh, bring the rotation down to 180. Okay, uh, so we have a 100 rotation of 180 on the P. And uh, then, you know, let's go and take this cube and uh, bring that down a little bit so that we have an intersection over here. Right, somewhere around there. And. Um, Okay, uh, once we have this, 
uh, I'm gonna go and uh, take a bool object drop the uh, tube inside the bool and the cube inside the bool and so we see here that we have some cuts and I'm gonna go choose create single object I mean uh, hide new edges okay that is what we want hide new edges great okay so this is the place where we're going to place our gems okay uh, so let's go and I'm gonna go choose a platonic object uh, I'm gonna drag that up okay um, so once we have that over here I'm gonna make uh, press C on the keyboard to make it editable and I have some default settings which I would like to follow so the X size will be 45 the Y will be 25 and uh, the Z will be uh, 45 again so we have this uh, flat um, you know uh, polygon over here and I'm just gonna take and uh, bring that down you know uh, let's make sure it doesn't uh, pop out okay so uh, that is uh, looking good and I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna set the X this time to 35 the Y size to 20 and the Z size to 35 as well so it's a bit smaller and I'm gonna drag it to the right and I'm gonna set give it some random rotation around uh, 70, de 70 degrees on the H rotation uh, we want to bring that down a bit yeah uh, we do not want it to be, you know, lapping. And uh, maybe set the X to around 32. Fine. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, I'm going to make a copy of that again. And I'm going to set the X to minus 32 this time. So that we have it over here. And maybe set the rotation to 75. You know, even, uh, what do you say? Uh, let's say around 20 degrees give it some random rotation uh, I don't like 20 let's say 35 um, 35 looks good and I, I'm actually go, go for a hundred okay so uh, let's break it out a little bit out yeah a little bit uh, back yeah cool uh, and we want to take this one and just bring that down a little bit. Uh, we can even set the Y to around, you know, 17 and uh, bring that down. You know, uh, that same over here, 17, bring that down. I mean, it doesn't matter if it intersects. I mean, you can arrange it however you want. That's not a problem. So, uh, this is the ring that we have. Oops. So now since the rings are done, um, I'm going to do the material. Uh, so I have three materials over here, which I'm going to show you how it was made. So let's go into the first material. And uh, in the color tab, I have put in a filter. And uh, in the filter, there is a noise. And in the noise, I have set the noise type to gaseous. Okay, uh, with a global scale of 350. And the colors, the top one is a white, and the color two is uh, with RGB value of 215 each. Okay, that's one. And nothing else in the filter. Then in the reflection channel, uh, we have a filter again, the same settings. Uh, so we can go here and uh, choose copy channel, and we can go here and do paste channel, which will give us this noise over here. And uh, the mix strength is around 85%, and the brightness is 60%. And go to the bump channel, set the strength to 3, and in the noise, I've chosen gaseous again with a global scale of 425, but the color 1 is black and the color 2 is white. Then specular, uh, we have a metal specular mode, metal, and the width is 55, height is 200, and we apply the same filter that we copied everywhere, that is the gaseous, the color 2 will be 215 each, uh, that is the first material. The second material is, so uh, we're just going to copy the first material paste it and just change the color settings that's it so we go to the filter and uh, the color one oops cancel the color one color one it has a value of 250 190 and 35 and the color two has a value of 225 130 and 10 so just copy these colors and just place it wherever we find the filter not on the noise over here right uh, then we have one last texture for the uh, gems so in the color channel is default. The transparency will be set to around on brightness 80%, refraction 2.3. And then we have blurriness over here. 
and noise and in the noise texture i've set the global scales to, to 250 that's it the color one is a rgb value of 200 and color two is white uh, that's it for the transparency and in the reflection we have a brightness of 90 percent mix strength of 50 percent and with a fresnel texture and in the specular we have a height of 40 and a fall of 5 that gives us the you know uh, the transparent transparent gem look so how are we going to texture this so I'm going to take the uh, uh, gold material and drop it on the tube so what we can see here is the whole gold material has been applied to the tube but we have this polygonal selection so I'm going to drag this uh, the white one drop it on the cube and I'm going to take this polygonal selection and drop it in the box over here and now we have let's see, uh, see yes now we have this wait a second how do we place that yeah let's just make a render and see what we get uh, yeah so now we have this white metallic texture uh, so the first one is the gold next after that comes the white and then we have this polygonal selection right that's how it's going to be placed and I'm going to take this uh, gem transparent material and drop it on the three platonic objects so now we have completely uh, finished our modeling but a small change is I'm going to take a hype subdivision service, drop it under the bool, and drop the cube under the subdivision service, which makes it very round. But since we have it completely round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select the cube, tube. Uh, I mean, I'm going to uncheck the subdivision service surface. I'm going to take the knife tool uh, by press. Uh, okay, first I'm going to select the points tool, press K on the keyboard, and then I'm going to make a small cut over here over here over here and over here so now when we put back the subdivision service we get a nice good looking you know uh, differentiation and a nice sharp edge right perfect so we're done with the ring I'm just gonna name this bull ring and uh, take these three platonic objects and uh, group all them and name this one as ring okay next let's drop in a camera and uh, let's look to the camera and I'm going to use some default coordinate settings which I have selected looking at the video and uh, let me just put them in the X position will be minus 730 the Y position will be uh, 770 the Z position will be 970 and uh, the H rotation will be minus 137 and the P rotation will be minus 30 so Okay, so these are the settings, and I'm going to take the ring, uh, drag it up, and uh, okay, actually let's go to the uh, front view, and uh, take the ring and drag it up just so that it's touching the floor, and then we're going to move it to the right, right over there. Next, uh, I'm going to be using Grayscale Gorilla's uh, HDMI Studio Pack with a seamless floor and uh, let's choose a um, oops not here go to the uh, Nacre Pro and go to studios and uh, let's choose uh, something like this bright room over here so what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, take only these and press ctrl C go to here and press ctrl V and uh, let's just get out the camera and see what we have Okay, I mean you can use whatever studio kit you want, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna go with that. Um, let me see. I think I'm gonna go with uh, the modern studio. Yes, that's correct. So uh, select these, the global light and the four stop boxes. Press Control C. Go back to our uh, tutorial one. Press Control V. Select these um, uh, for the previous ones, delete and let's go back to our camera and uh, let's select these uh, soft boxes. And in we have this uh, option here, see my camera. Let's just take that off and uh, 
I think we're pretty much done. Let me see if there's anything else. Mm, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, the last thing is just go to the render settings, go to anti-aliasing, set that to best effect ambient occlusion, effect global illumination, and I'm just going to go with the low settings for the purpose of uh, fast rendering just to show you guys. And let me just hit render and see what we get. So this is the final render, guys. I mean, uh, you, I mean, you do see some small mistakes over here, but that's the problem with the lighting and the lighting setup. So basically, we can see this, uh, you know, this nice uh, bump effect that we put over there uh, with some good reflection and uh, the nice gem material right over there. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial, guys. And please like, share, comment, subscribe to this tutorial. And uh, and uh, hope you like this tutorial. Is and if there's anything that you would like me, you know, to comment on, please leave a comment. Any tutorials that you would like me to make, just let me know. And uh, have a good day. See ya.